The 305N is the latest development in the evolution of the drop leg ambulance stretcher. In this video, you will learn about the new features of the stretcher and how to operate it safely. Procedures which will help you get the best out of your equipment for the benefit of both you and your patient. The major difference you will notice is at the front end of the stretcher. The new half height also acts as a reduced length, loading unit and personal effects tray. Take the weight with the handle, release the pin, lower the tray. Don't pinch the cables together. The other obvious improvement is the use of the single action curved leg release handles. Combined with the multi-height functionality, this means the 305N will drop and lock into position in stages if required. This staged release also acts as a safety feature, preventing the legs from collapsing. The process for loading the 305N is a simple one. First and foremost when loading, you must always ensure the side rails are up. As vehicles have different interior spaces and loading wheel clearance. As with all previous stretcher models, the front legs will need to be disengaged when they connect with the bumper of the vehicle and the single action of lifting the right hand front leg release lever will allow you to push the front half of the 305N smoothly into the vehicle. Remember to check that the front wheels have dropped into position. When the rear legs connect with the vehicle, lift the left hand rear leg release lever. Then support the rear of the stretcher and push it all the way into the car. When the lock engages with the locking bar, pull on the rear push bar to ensure the lock is secure. If the stretcher does not load smoothly, there may be an issue worth discussing with your local workshop manager. But remember, loading wheel clearance helps in a successful load. Unloading the stretcher from the vehicle is the single most critical part of the process. The unloading process begins with the setup. Pull out the extension handles. Disengage the stretcher from the floor locks by lifting the yellow release handle and simultaneously pull the stretcher using the rear crossbar. For added support, continue to pull the stretcher out using the extension handles. Under no circumstances should you pull the stretcher out by the yellow release handle. As you remove the stretcher from the vehicle, you will hear four distinct clicks as the rear legs drop into position. Each of these acts as a brake to prevent collapse, but they will not engage if the stretcher has been pulled out using the yellow release handle. Watch what happens if you use the yellow release handle to remove the stretcher. The front legs will release when the stretcher is halfway out of the vehicle and like the rear legs, they have a safety position which you will hear click as the legs fall to full height. But it's best if the front loading wheels remain in the vehicle until it's confirmed the front legs are locked. We've already looked at setting the stretcher half height, but the variable settings also allow you to raise the stretcher in stages then, by following service protocols, you can return the stretcher to full operating height. The last major difference you will notice is that the IV pole storage has moved to the left-hand side of the undercarriage, beside the rear leg release lever. The side rails return to the fold-down style of the 302, though this is mounted on the square rail rather than the tubular rail. Like the 302, it unlocks by pulling the release pin. These rails are designed to contain a patient and should not be used as a support.